Greetings and salutations. I am your humble Adobe instructor, AJ Wood. Thanks for joining me for another Tip Tuesday. Last week, we took a look at part one in our portrait retouching series, where we set up the image inside of Lightroom. This week, we continue with part two, and I'll show you how I finish off the image inside of Photoshop. Let's go ahead and take a look. You can see on the screen in front of you, I'm still in the develop module where we left off last week in Lightroom. I'm simply going to right click the image and choose edit in Photoshop. Give me a second to actually zoom in so that you can see better. And now what we're going to do is create a duplicate layer. This is the first step. You can do this by pressing command J on a Mac or control J on a PC. You can see on the screen in front of you, I've already made a healed layer. Let's take a look at our healing tools. You have your choice of the spot healing brush, the regular healing brush, or the patch tool. I'm going to go ahead and grab the spot healing brush, and because this is Photoshop CS5, I'm going to choose the content aware feature. Now, if you're using CS4 or older, you'll simply choose proximity match. Let me go ahead and zoom the image in a little bit, and I'm just going to go through and just knock out some of the blemishes by clicking on them. There's a little wisp of hair I'll paint out. Right. And I'll go ahead and zoom out. And you can see that this is our before, right? And this is our after, right? So here's our before image and our after. And again, I just use the spot healing brush to actually get through that. So once I have the healed layer, I'll go ahead and merge the layers together by using Command E on a Mac or Control E on a PC. So I merged the layers together, and now the next thing I want to do is actually open up the brightness a little bit. So I'm going to use a combination of levels and curves. I'm going to do a levels and a curves adjustment layer to go ahead and open up the brightness and kind of put in my own little custom vignette. So I'll start by, in the adjustment panel, choosing a levels adjustment layer. And then I'll go ahead and just brighten this up a little bit. Okay, not too much. Don't want to create a hot spot or anything. Right. And then I'll go ahead and in the adjustments panel, I can go back to the adjustments list and I'll add a curves adjustment and I'm going to darken the image because remember, every adjustment layer comes with a custom mask. So right now, if you look at the curves adjustment, notice that the screen is dark, hey, the image is dark, and my mask is white. If I want to now seemingly brighten the image, I'm going to paint with black using my brush tool. So I'm going to grab the regular brush tool, B for brush. I'm going to paint on this curves mask, make the brush a little bigger, and now I can kind of paint in the light where I want it to go. Okay, so there's one nice little stroke there, and then I'll resize the brush, make it smaller, start putting in my accent strokes across the top, okay, some accent strokes for the hair, right, maybe a little bit over here on the right hand side, and again kind of open that up a bit, <coughs> and then down here. Okay, so maybe a little bit of the hair showing along the side, with the image right in there. Okay, so take a quick look for after, I think that could be a little brighter, so we'll just open that up some over here. Okay. And again, this is our mask. Right. There we go. And then we just kind of shape that a little bit. Okay. So kind of accent the face. Now I just noticed I have the earrings here. Let me zoom in. I have the earrings here. I think those are a little distracting, so I'm going to pull those out. So I'm actually going to just go back to the background layer and grab the patch tool real quick. And I can use the patch tool to just kind of lasso those earrings. And I'll just pull them out because I find them to be a little distracting. And that's a quick change. Didn't need to bother to make a duplicate layer for that. And now I'll zoom out. And once again, move things around. You can see that's much better. Right. <clears throat> so now that I've actually adjusted the brightness and I've uh, done the initial removal of the blemishes, now I'm going to do the skin smoothing. Right. So what I want to do is actually 
merge all these layers together, but maybe I want to actually go back and adjust the curves and the levels later. So instead of collapsing them all down and flattening the image, I'm going to use the merge everything command. Hey, this is command option shift E on a Mac or control alt shift E on a PC. What I'll do is I'll select the top curves layer. I like to call this the trash can command because it is every single key on the keyboard. Merge everything to a new layer. So this new layer at the very top is a composite of all the changes that I've made at the bottom. So I have the option, the ability to go back and adjust levels and curves later to my taste if I want to, and then I can simply merge everything again. All right, so I'm going to rename this layer and call it composite. And then I'll duplicate that. And the duplicate, I'm gonna rename blur because this is the layer that I'm going to blur. So I'm gonna select the blur layer, go to the filter menu, go to blur and I'll choose a Gaussian blur. I'm gonna set this to about 25 pixels and click OK. And now what I'll do is add a mask. I'm going to go to my Add Mask button and I'm going to hold the Option key on a Mac, the Control key on a PC, and this is going to add a black mask. So notice right now the blur is hidden. The reason I'm adding a black mask is I'll use my brush tool and paint in white to select the areas that I want to blur. So I'll go ahead and grab my brush tool, B for brush, and I'll make sure the brush is set to white for the foreground color, and I'll simply paint in the blur. And I'm really just kind of concentrating on the face and the neck. Okay, so here's the blur. Then I'll turn around and press the X key to flip the foreground color to black, and now I'll simply paint out the eyes. Right. Now the blur does look rather heavy, and this is because I have the opacity of the layer at 100%. So I'm going to reduce the opacity of the layer to about 70%, and that blends a little better. And now I'll start playing with my brush okay, and painting out areas that do not need to be blurred. Okay, so I'm just grabbing the areas that do not need to be blurred. Okay. And you don't have to use, let me just show you here, you don't have to use 100% opacity on the brush when you're painting in and painting out. So I'm actually using 50% opacity to really kind of blend that the way that I want. <clears throat> so I'll come in and I'll just paint some of the accent marks here on her face. Okay. But again, I'm just changing the opacity of the brush. Okay. So we can see some of the accent marks on her face. I'm going to paint around the lines of her face here because I don't want to have that kind of glow going around her chin. Right? And if we zoom in a little bit, you can see right, this is the before and this is the after. So we get a little bit of skin softening, but we're not losing all the texture there. Right? I can see some marks I could clean up. <coughs> right, so I'll take a second. I could clean up some marks there. And I'll zoom out once again. Right? And then here is our finished image. I'll go ahead and close that. I'll choose to save it. Okay, it'll close down. I'll take us back over into Lightroom. So here we have the completed portrait retouch. We're back inside of Lightroom. You can see the before and after picture that we started and ended with. As always, I appreciate you joining me each week. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. And if you want to catch me on Facebook, go to ajwood.com Facebook. Thanks again for being here, and I'll see you next week.